Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shalom. I'm David Mensah, uh, Israeli government spokesman. Uh, today is Tuesday, the 4th of June, day 242 of the October 7th war, when Hamas's army of terror invaded our border. Uh, Israel's conditions for ending the war have not changed. The destruction of Hamas's military and governing capabilities, the freeing of all 124 hostages, and ensuring that Gaza no longer poses a threat to Israel. All of our objectives are within reach. Israel will not compromise on any of them. The precise framework proposed by Israel during the negotiations maintain these principles while establishing conditions for transition between the stages. Now, Hamas is preventing a hostage release deal. It unreasonably demands that uh, the IDF exit the Gaza Strip and end the war. We will not leave Hamas in power so that they can repeat their rocket fire and the October 7th massacre. Now uh, the hostages. Last night the IDF shared the devastating news with the families of 85-year-old Amiram Cooper, one of the founders of the kibbutz, of kibbutz near Oz, 80-year-old Chaim Perry, also from Kibbutz near Oz. 80-year-old Yoram Metzger, also from Kibbutz near Oz. And 51-year-old Israeli-British citizen Nadav Popplewell from Kibbutz near Im. The IDF had the unenviable and sad task to tell their loved ones that their hostage relatives were killed a few months ago while in Hamas captivity in Gaza. To add to the cruelty, their bodies are still, still being held by Hamas. May their memories be a blessing. To the north now, where Iran's proxy Hezbollah have increased rocket drone and mortar fire against Israel. These attacks have caused significant fires. During last night, after more than nine hours of firefighting, the fire crews brought the Amiyad fire under control. Eighteen firefighting teams from the north, from coastal and central districts, worked to gain control of fires alongside police and others. This morning, four planes from the Elad Air Firefighting Squadron were launched to help the firefighting teams get fires under control. Firefighters have worked throughout the night in, uh, with very high intensity, great determination, and for long hours. In Kiryat Shmona and Kfar Giladi, uh, in the north, firefighters extinguished fires and carried out containment operations. Together with uh, emergency teams of Kfar Giladi, the forces stopped the fire and prevented the spread of fire to damage property. The same happened in Keren Naftali and other areas in the northern district who've also been uh, fighting fires uh, for almost 24 hours in extreme weather conditions while striving to reach out and save lives, save lives and prevent damage to property. This is not a sustainable reality. Israel's northern residents, tens of thousands of them, evacuated, will not live under such threat. The Israeli government is committed to ensure their security and the return to their homes. It is up to Hezbollah to decide if this can be accomplished by diplomatic means or by force. You know, since October 7th, and these attacks from the Lebanese border region, the IDF today confirmed over 100 terrorists eliminated through precise, high-quality, intelligence-led Israeli strikes. Ladies and gentlemen, this country will be defended. We are defending this country, and no one should be surprised by our response. Hezbollah, just like Hamas, have the same Iranian-inspired script to start wars, then to lose them, all the while to cry victim and then repeat. 
Next, the Prime Minister yesterday appeared that the Knesset Foreign Affairs and Defence Committee, he briefed the committee on the progress of the war in Gaza with an emphasis on our limited and targeted activity in Rafah, the Philadelphia Corridor, negotiations to release our hostages, the issue of the day after the war, uh, Judea and Samaria, West Bank and Iran. The Prime Minister said, quote, the claims that we have agreed to a ceasefire without our conditions being met are incorrect, end quote. Now, tomorrow we mark 57 years since the reunification of Jerusalem, our eternal capital. The Jewish people have had an unbreakable bond uh, with Jerusalem, and the State of Israel has established its, its institutions of government and law there, the foundations of the only democratic state in the Middle East. You know, Jerusalem was the capital of the Jewish people, when London was still a swamp and a, a mere bend in the River Thames. In Jerusalem, there is freedom of religion and worship for all religions. Indeed, the only time there has ever been freedom of access to all religious sites in Jerusalem has been since the city was reunified in 1967. So there's much to celebrate. Now an update from COGAT and their work coordinating aid into Gaza. Just a few hours ago, UNRWA uh, complained that there was almost no fuel available in Gaza to operate critical uh, plants. <coughs> they called on Israel to provide access to water. So once again, today UNRWA can tick that propaganda box on their checklist on their ongoing mission to embitter the lives of Gazans and perpetuate this conflict. So here are the facts. As we like to say here, the facts don't lie. The UN can bring fuel into Gaza every single day. They choose not to. In the last week of May, UNRWA coordinated 670,000 litres of fuel. It could have been double that amount. So UNRWA, instead of pointing the finger at Israel, maybe try taking responsibility for the things in your own control. UNRWA is unfortunately a hopelessly inefficient organization. In contrast, yesterday, uh, COGAT got 259 aid trucks into Gaza, 222 trucks via the Kerem Shalom crossing, 37 trucks via the Eris crossing. Israel won't stop expanding our efforts to facilitate humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. Since the beginning of the war, 31,000 trucks delivering more than 600,000 600, tons of humanitarian aid have entered Gaza. We are continuing to expand our efforts to facilitate humanitarian aid into Gaza. So that's the end of our briefing today. I will now uh, take your questions, which you should put in the chat, uh, with your news outlet. The first question we have today, <coughs> excuse me, is from, da <coughs> excuse me, from Dan Williams uh, at Reuters. And uh, Dan asks, Qatar said today that it has yet to receive a clear Israeli position to uh, wind down the Gaza war. What is Israel's position and when, and when will it be submitted? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, Dan. I haven't got anything to add on what Qatar has said and what they have or have not received. Um, uh, of course, the uh, position of the Israeli government when it comes to these negotiations is highly sensitive. Lives literally uh, hang in the balance. Um, the Israeli position is being made clear, but the principles which we have laid out of the three aims of this war, number one, to ensure that Gaza no longer forms a threat uh, to our people uh, and to, to Israel and to any civilized, anyone in the civilized world, to get back our hostages to bring them home, all of them, all of them, the live ones, unfortunately, the ones who've been killed, uh, all of them to bring them home, every single one of them. It occupies every single moment of every waking hour of every day, and for many Israelis, their sleeping hours uh, as well. Um, and of course, ensure that Hamas no longer has any military 
or civilian or, um, or governing power over Hamas. Those principles run right through all of the submissions we have submitted. Second question from um, Dan Williams at Reuters: When will the Prime Minister's When will the Prime Minister address Congress, and will he fly to Washington aboard um, the Wing of Zion? Uh, I take it that means the name of the aircraft. Um, so, on when the Prime Minister will uh, uh, um, address Congress um, over the weekend? It's true the Prime Minister uh, did receive an invitation to address a joint uh, meeting of uh, Houses of Congress. So the Prime Minister has accepted that invitation and he will be the first leader of a country to address both Houses of Congress for a, uh, a record fourth time. Um, when he received the invitation, the Prime Minister said, I'm very moved to have, quote, I'm very moved to have the privilege of representing Israel before both Houses of Congress and to present the truth about our just war against those who seek to destroy us uh, to the representatives of the American people and the entire uh, world. As for the address, uh, as for the date of um, that visit to Washington, D.C., uh, the Prime Minister announced yesterday that it would not be um, the 13th of June, which had been uh, talked about because that coincides with the Jewish holiday of Shavuot. Um, and dates are currently being coordinated. Um, from Joel Pollock at Breitbart News, uh, his first question is, can Israel fight two wars at once if a larger scale war erupts in southern Lebanon? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, Joel. Um, no one should be in any doubt of the IDF's uh, ability to fight uh, these uh, the, the the threats against us. You know, it's not just uh, in the the war uh, in Hama against Hamas uh, in Gaza, but also uh, the war against Hezbollah. This is a seven-fronted war. Um, we're we're being attacked from Yemen, uh, Judea and Samaria in the West Bank, uh, where a terrorist attack was just thwarted uh, just yesterday. Uh, from Iran, Iraq, Syria. And of course, uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon, and Hamas in Gaza, a seven fronted uh, war. Uh, I would say to you, Joel, no one should be in any doubt whatsoever of Israel's ability to defend itself. Second question from Joel Pollock. How does Israel view the U.S. resolution announced yesterday at the United Nations Security Council to support Biden, the Biden administration's ceasefire deal uh, proposal? Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for that question, uh, Joel. I don't have any further information on Israel's reaction to any proposed um, UN resolution. A further question from Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. The U.S. State Department continues to insist that the proposal for a ceasefire was, in fact, Israel's proposal. Can you kindly tell us who wrote the proposal and approved it? Was it the Security Cabinet, the War Cabinet, or some other body why did the government debate the proposal after uh, the Biden had, uh, after Biden announced it, if it was uh, an Israeli um, uh, proposal? Uh, thank you very much for that, Joel. Um, so the prime minister has made clear uh, his views on that matter. He's made clear his views in the Knesset yesterday and subsequently to a, a direct message uh, which was put out. Uh, they're available on the Prime Minister's website. You can see uh, the Prime Minister's response uh, to that question. Uh, irrespective of the, uh, where, that, um, where the ideas uh, for uh, this latest uh, proposal uh, were born and where they come from, uh, Israel is absolutely determined to, number one, destroy Hamas militarily and also their governing capabilities to, ensure, to bring back our hostages and, of course, to ensure that Gaza never again poses a threat uh, to us. Um, there's no room for wishful thinking here in Israel about uh, Hamas being deterred or they wouldn't try it again or they haven't got the ability. They have the will. They have the will uh, to, to attack Israel again. They show that every single moment of every single day. They've done that uh, for the last two decades or so since they took over uh, the uh, control uh, in Gaza. But Israelis 
and for this matter there is wall-to-wall -wall support are simply not willing to live next to this genocidal terrorist organization uh, anymore. Uh, Israelis, when they go to, bat, go to bed north, south, east or west, need to ensure that they don't wake up at 6.30 in the morning uh, with Hamas gunmen, gunmen staring them um, in the face. We simply will not accept that possibility uh, anymore. Uh, we've had these wars every 18 months or so, and this is the last one. Next question from uh, Jim Williams at Zenger International News. Much has been made of the flow of international aid flowing into uh, Gaza. Has there been any international aid being provided to the displaced residents of Israel? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, Jim. So, of course, uh, we take care of our own people uh, here in Israel. Yes, of course, it's difficult. Um, more than 60,000 people displaced up north and from down south as well, a similar uh, number. But the purpose of this war is to ensure that those people can go home and sleep safely uh, in their beds. We're not looking for um, any handouts uh, from anyone in terms of food aid uh, right now, uh, or ever for that matter. Uh, we want victory in this war against this genocidal terrorist army, and we will fulfill that objective. Next question from um, Fred Eager from uh, Interplanetary News. An affiliated Hezbollah news outlet, Al-Akbar, uh, reports that Britain was warned that Lebanon, uh, has warned Lebanon that Israel will launch a large-scale uh, offensive in mid-June. Do you confirm or deny that IDF ground operation in Lebanon is imminent? Thank you for that question, uh, Fred. Uh, I've given all the comments I want to give about uh, the situation on Israel's north uh, in, a, in my briefing uh, this afternoon, uh, and you can um, see my comments uh, right there. No one should be in any doubt of Israel's willingness to defend itself. Uh, of course, we will always go for the diplomatic uh, resolution, if it's possible, uh, to push Hezbollah back to the uh, Litani River uh, the 1701 UN resolution, which has not for one day ever been uh, adhered to. But we, we, of course, would like a diplomatic resolution. Uh, but if that does not come to pass, then um, Hezbollah and Iranian, their Iranian paymasters, uh, should be in no doubt uh, about our determination to make sure that this country is defended. Next question from Junko Yasmin Utmazgin from Kyoto News. Firstly, what are the Israeli terms of the negotiations decided at the cabinet meeting uh, last night? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Junko. Uh, we haven't uh, made any releases following uh, any cabinet meetings that are, may have happened last night or even tonight for that matter. As soon as there are um, uh, decisions made from those cabinet meetings, uh, they will be de um, uh, they will be passed over in the usual way and made public as they always are in a democracy. Uh, number two, what happened to the government? What what will happen to the government if Smotrich and others uh, leave the cabinet? Uh, thankfully, uh, that's thank you for that question, Yunko. Uh, thankfully, uh, I'm an Israeli government spokesman and uh, not a political spokesman. Uh, the Prime Minister has made his views very clear on these subjects. Uh, our ultimate, his ultimate objective is to keep this country safe uh, from Hamas and from the other uh, Iranian uh, terrorist uh, forces which are attacking us on seven fronts, on seven fronts. But our resolve um, is absolutely um, determined. We are determined in this country to face down this enemies. There is only one Jewish state in the entire world. And for generations and generations, Jews were attacked and there was no one to defend us. Uh, in the last 76 years since this country was established, and even before that as well, um, this country has an army. When people attack Jews in Israel, this country will be defended. 
Uh, next question from Henrietta Chaka from Reuters. Um, U.S. President Biden has said that Netanyahu may be stalling on ending the Gaza war for political reasons. Any response? Uh, thank you, uh, Henrietta. That's a political question which I won't uh, delve into, but I think no one can be in any doubt of the prime minister's patriotism. It is up to the Israeli people, the Israeli people, to decide who its leaders should be. Uh, this country is a democracy with regular elections. Sometimes our elections are a little bit uh, too regular. But when the time comes, this country will have the opportunity, as is right in a democracy, to choose who its leaders should be. And that is of no, um, that is uh, of, that has nothing to do with what any one external to Israel or any views that they may have. That decision will be taken by the people of Israel and no one else. It is outside the diplomatic norms of every right-thinking country to comment on the leaders, uh, whether they should be a prime minister or not be a prime minister. Uh, that is for the decision of its local population where there are free and fair elections. Uh, you know, Israel is the only country where there are free and fair elections for hundreds of miles in every direction. So this country is a democracy. It will choose its own leaders, and it's not for uh, anyone else in the world to make any comment uh, thereof in terms of uh, changing leaders. The, the, the people of the Israel will decide when it is time for the next election, and that when that election happens, the people's voice will uh, they will make their their views known, and uh, that decision will be taken accordingly. Uh, next question from Henrietta Chaka from. Uh, from Reuters, the war cabinet is meeting tonight to discuss fighting along the northern border. Is Israel shifting its policy on escalating uh, in Lebanon? Thank you, Henrietta. I made my uh, view, I went, made the, the Israeli government's views clear on, our, on the situation uh, in Lebanon. Uh, this country will be defended. This is a situation which cannot continue. Um, it is uh, unthinkable that so many Israelis uh, have been displaced from their home, from Israeli sovereign territory. Uh, this is uh, a, an attack from Iran, the genocidal fascist Islamic, Islamist government in Iran through their proxies here uh, in Hezb with Hezbollah and with Hamas. And these will be defended. They will be stood up to and they will be defended. Uh, Israel's people had deserved to go back to their homes in Israeli sovereign territory. Another question from uh, Joel Pollack um, of uh, Breitbart News. Just now, Biden reportedly told Time magazine that uh, Netanyahu is prolonging the war for his own political reasons. Is that true? Thank you for that question, Joel. I believe I um, answered that question uh, from Henrietta Chaka from Reuters uh, just before, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, another question from Arye O'Sullivan. Uh, from Khan English, is there any official number of Israeli hostages known to still be alive? Uh, thank you very much uh, for that question, uh, Arie. Um, the, the last information I had, which I saw from yesterday, uh, was that 39, unfortunately, of our hostages are confirmed to be no longer uh, alive. Uh, but I haven't got the latest figure today. Today, so. Um, I would uh, I would be happy to come back to you and let you know of the latest figure that we have for today. Um, so that seems to be the last question we have for today. Uh, we'll have another briefing for you tomorrow. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, please do stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.